Hey guys, this video is for um, one of my acquaintance on Facebook. He, I think he lives in Europe. And one time I posted on Facebook and I mentioned that uh, Judo is probably one of the most complete martial art. And uh, he was wondering why. And I think he was kind of shocked by that statement because he's a lifetime, lifelong uh, martial artist, just like myself. We've been do, I've been doing martial for a very long time, over 20 years, and I think uh, so. So I see, and he was kind of shocked because you know judo. When you look at it, it's kind of very one-dimensional in the sense that you try to grab each other, you try to throw each other to the ground, and then the way to win is to throw each other cleanly, throw your opponent cleanly, or uh, pin your opponent. For 25 seconds, um, pin the pin them down, or do a submission either via a, a, a strangulation hold or through a, um, a joint lock, right? And so the game is very dynamic, it's an Olympic sport, and so but there's no striking involved. So why is why do I consider one of the most complete martial arts system? And here's the reason why. Okay, a lot of people don't understand or don't think about these issues. One, judo. It's very effective because it uses. Uh, um, it, there's no prearranged movement. I mean, um, there's katas, but you don't learn the katas till you're a black belt. And even then, um, some people do learn it because they. It's a requirement to get a black belt, but after they get it, they don't usually practice it. Um, so judo is all about uh, the, the, the concept they develop is called randori. Um, I call it constructive free play, and basically. You just literally try to play and try to figure out how to make the move work, right? Okay, so it's based on resistant training. In other words, to get the move right, you're, you're pushing, shoving, pinning, you know, rolling around. It's very dynamic. It's not like you punch in the air. Okay, so it taxes your mind and body um, all the time when done properly. Okay, so the second component is the educational process. Okay, most martial art claim to have an educational process, but judo, the founder of judo, Jigoro Kano, uh, developed judo, so, and basically he pushed really hard to be in a part of the Japanese educational system, and to this day, I, 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 don't quote me on this, but you can still find a lot of judo clubs in um, high school, university, etc. Okay, so, um, during World War II, when, um, Japan, uh, when America uh, went to Japan to occupy Japan after the bomb, they outlaw all martial art except for kendo and judo because they consider it as a sport, right? And so um, when the GI came back from America, when they were stationed in Okinawa and a couple other Japanese bases, they came back and the two martial art systems that they learned when they first came back from Japan was judo and kendo, right? And then eventually they started adding karate, etc. So, educational component is very important, okay? Number three, there's a morality component, okay, a virtue component. Um, judo has several components that are built in. Um, one of them was the morality issue, right? So, um, I'm driving right now, I'm on a mental break for it, but basically, it talks about mutual benefits, right? So, judo is all about, I'm trying to help you grow as a martial artist, as a judoka, and it, and by the result of that, I will be more successful in what I do. Because you get better, I get better. All right? um, it talks about mutual benefit and mutual harmony. Right? So true, true judoka or true martial artist is about harmony. Not about uh, strife or violence. Right? And it's very hard to do that because once you acquire skill, you want to impose your will on people through the, technical, through the violent technical skills that you develop which is a mistake because at the end of the day, you want to be harmonious in your interaction with people. It's harder to be harmonious than to create strife, especially when you have the power to shut someone down, but you chose not to. All right, so harmonious development. Um, and three, by time, uh, number four, uh, by the time you're a black belt, you learn all these self-defense moves. And they're not very effective because this is where they fall apart. They did not put enough resistance in the self-defense technique. Okay? It, it looks like pre-arranged kata. But they do have atimiwaza, atimiwaza, which is striking technique. Okay, Learning how to counter-strike someone. 
Okay, they do have um, they do have knife disarmament, um, gun disarmament, etc. And all the disarmament technique basically came from the samurai era. All right, and I don't know how effective they are. I I, I, I study them. Um, I have some problems with the way they're executed, but. Um, at the end of the day, it's it's very holistic in the sense that it has an educational component, it has a striking component, which is very de-emphasized, and it has a self-defense component, and at the same time, it's founded on realism, because the training technique to train judo, you literally have to push, shove, pin, um, every class, that's what you have to do, alright? So when people think of complete martial art, they think of MMA, which is like, uh, you know, you learn how to strike, clinch, whatever. In that sense, that is a complete martial art. But in most MMA schools, they don't have uh, a moral component or educational component. And in judo, they have that. And that's the, so in, in essence, I feel judo is more complete in the sense of human character development. Um, when you think of complete martial art, we think of uh, phys physicality, like, you know, how badly I can kick someone's ass in which phase or which range of the fight. Now, judo is limited in that sense. Most judoka don't know how to punch someone or kick someone. But if they get a hold of you, they will throw you to the ground and they will, you know, you know, pin you pretty hard or choke you and armbar you, right? But... Uh, a good judoka, like a really, really good judoka, someone who's center and uh, have a good understanding of who they are on an intellectual, creative, and a spiritual level, will be very center. And um, hopefully, that's what judo is about. And that was the goal of Jigoro Kano, the founder of judo. He wanted to use judo as a way to bring human beings together. He wanted to use judo as a sport. And um, this is why um, if you go to anywhere in the world, judo, the language of judo is spoken in Japanese. In other words, uh, we live in America, but I can go to France and walk into a judo club and they'll call all the names, all the terms using the Japanese words. Okay, so judo is like the Latin of the martial art world. Uh, the Japanese uh, language is like the Latin of the judo world. Okay, and so I can go to Portugal, or Brazil, uh, Mexico, walk into a judo club, and so, a sensei would say, a Sionagi, or, or Sotogeri, or uh, Osekomi, or whatever, right? Or uh, Mete, and we know exactly what that means, you know what I mean? And we can play that game, you know, there's a universal rule, and it brings people together, and, and because it's, on one hand, it's so physical, it shows how weak you are, because you get your ass kicked consistently. But then when you get good at it, you start kicking people's ass, it shows how strong you are, you know. But then that's the duality right there, but that's not good enough. You also have to understand that you did not get good or strong by yourself. You needed other people to help you, and that's and therefore you reach down or reach out to help other people. And in exchange, you learn to be harmonious with people. Because in order to work with someone, you have to have a same, you have to have similar goal or same goal, same vision, share vision, share goal. And without share vision, share goal, all you have is basically a bunch of people with common interests, and that's not good enough. To to really have longevity in something, you gotta have share vision, share goal.